gonna take my big old bind uh, my uh, batting scissors and I'm just gonna cut this little piece off the end here doesn't need to be perfectly straight um, and then I'll stick this in my scrap bin or puppy beds whatever it's too I could cut it I could piece it together but I notice the more pieces you kind of put together sometimes uh, the worse it can be so what I'm going to do is unclamp. My machine over to the middle. And then I'm going to pull it back down a little bit so that um, my uh, scissors can run kind of a straight edge here. Take it down to about there. Maybe a little more. Okay. And I'm going to lock it and kind of pull it taut. And then I'm going to take some good sharp scissors, fabric only scissors, <laughs> and I'm going to start at this edge. And then I'm going to keep my scissors so that they're the same. I have my hand on the back of my rail so it doesn't cut any fabric that's on the rail, get a somewhat straight edge. It's not going to be perfectly straight, but at least I'm not going chomp, 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 chomp. <laughs> and I just let the scissors do the work. Okay. So get this machine out of the way and let me get it turned off. Okay, now I'm just gonna unlock my upper rail. Just give it a slight pull. Trays in the way again. Because I have my big leaders on, so, and those red, the red snapper piece in there sometimes catches on to my tray. going to pull it to there so then that way I can take my red snapper clamps off oh turn my ups off I do keep my machine on and ups which is like a battery backup in case I'm in the middle of quilting and we lose power I'll have at least an hour, should have about an hour's worth of power to continue. And it should, it should not interrupt. And I have had it happen. So it doesn't interrupt my, um, my quilting. And at least I can get to the end of a row before stopping and saving my place. Okay. All right, so. We are off there, off the frame. I still have plenty of backing fabric if I wanted to do anything else. Sticks on the floor, and now I'm just ready to cut. So what I'm gonna do is, I do believe the instructions tell you to cut it just outside of the sew line. Um, which I will do um, with the exceptions of the edges that I'm going to serge. I will serge all four of just these edges here and then I will come in and zigzag this because I struggle with my serger still trying to, to do corners around there and that's a lot of fabric for it to cut. So, and then I will not, you can if you're using fabric that you have a lot of fraying on uh, zigzag over the top on each end um, but for me you're gonna you're gonna put binding on it anyway so unless it's fraying really bad I don't mess with it uh, so I would like I said I'm gonna come in and just cut this down to here to the edge of the actual stabilizer and then run it under my serger and then I'll be back um, I got to change the batteries anyways on these okay so I've cut my pieces down. I just kind of wanted to show you guys um, 
what they look like. So it's going to look like a, a fat H or a, an, a fat I, <laughs> really. And here's the one that has the pocket that I did the edge to edge on. You can see the pattern on the back, hopefully. And I have not surged any of my ends, but what I will do is take it to the serger and serge these four corn these four edges. And then I'm going to come back on the machine and zigzag in here, okay, to finish them so when we pin them together. The next stage after we do that will be to do the handles, to sew the handles on, which we'll do together. Uh, here is the batik one here, okay, and here is the quilting on the other side. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this, but um, then I, I'm happy with it actually I mean it looks some of it looks a little messy would I put it on a client's quilt right now no do I need more practice absolutely however I think it's not bad considering I haven't done anything in a long time and most of what I did do was stempling so all right and then here's the the blue and white one okay I'll cut down and then here's the back side. I kind of like this one. Uh, this one's kind of a little more closer than this one. However, and you know, considering the fabric in some areas like this because of the design, and this one was really hard to see where the thread was, and you can kind of see where it overlapped on those fabrics because I just couldn't I couldn't see my thread. So if you're going to do something like that, make sure you're, you've got a contrasting thread that you can see. So, so I'm going to go take it over to the serger and do that real quick. Unfortunately, I don't have a camera set up over there. So, um, and, and it's only going to take me a few minutes anyways to do, and I'll be back and we'll, we'll zigzag around the edges and start working on the handles. Okay guys, so I've got my edges surged. Now what I want to do is do just a quick little zigzag in that U area. But because it's uh, quite thick now with the batting and the quilting on it, um, I would have to change my foot. And I am going to use a walking foot for this. So let me go ahead and change that out real quick. Um, typically your walking foot would just be something that you could attach over here. This one's got, it's kind of nice. It has this little roller in here. Let me show you guys. It has this roller that rolls the fabric. Um, and I can set it, um, to either be up or down. I can also go, once it's plugged in, I can go into my machine and I can set it to grab more fabric, less fabric, you know, uh, roll quicker when it sews. Um, I don't really mess with it. I just leave it with the standard piece. It just hooks up in the back, back here. And then my um, machine senses it. Give it a little tighten down. And then we're ready. Let me grab one of them. I'm just gonna show you the one and this is what I'm gonna do with all three. Okay, I'm going to set it on a zigzag stitch. Uh, let's see. Let's test the width because I don't want it too wide. Of course, my, my uh, surging is about a little over a quarter inch, about five eighths of an inch. So let me grab a little scrap of fabric here and just test the zigzag on it. If I stick my using this quarter inch okay that is a little thin for me so I want it to go up. Let's go to five. If we get how wide we get here with my with the stitch, I don't know if I can get it 
Okay, it's under a quarter inch. I'm good with that. It doesn't necessarily have to have an actual stitch area. I just don't want it wider than what I'm using for this because this is five eighths, but you're going to, so your seam allowance is going to be half an inch. So, all right. So, let's kind of roll this up a little bit. I don't want to knock into the camera. This is going to be tight quarters here. <laughs> do a little knot stitch to start. Actually, I want to move it to this right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Alright, so now I'm at the edge. I'm going to bring it to the inner part. I'm going to lift my foot. I'm just going to turn it ever so slightly. Do one stitch out, one stitch back. Lift it and turn it again to kind of give myself a corner. And I'll show you guys that again. Once we get down here a little bit. Okay, we're almost at that corner. All right, lift the foot, give it a little turn, let it go out, and then back in to catch the fabric, turn it all the way again. I'll show you what that looks like. All this is doing is just it's just kind of giving it giving it a little finished edge because if you you don't need a serger you can just do a zigzag stitch all the way around it if you want it or down the sides it's just that when this these two pieces are sewn together um, you will be able to see that on the inside so I kind of wanted to give it a finished look um, I think you guys can see that where it came out, I came back in, I turned it a little bit, came back in, turned it again so that I could turn a corner. You can see that one. And I'm gonna do it again on the other side, just in this U. Let me roll this up a little bit. So you guys can see this. Start off knot. So long as it's that stitch you make is within your half inch seam allowance, you can make it wider if you want or smaller. Completely up to you. I'm at the corner, lift your foot, turn it about 45 degrees, stitch out one, back in and then finish your turn, your 90 degree turn there. There you go. Pretty easy. And I'll do it one last time for you guys. And then I will shut the camera off to finish the rest of these up. And then we'll come back and do the um, handles and I'm not sure and I do apologize that there sometimes like the other videos kind of were abrupt when they ended um, because I wasn't sure how long those other videos were so um, and this is a, a little bit I mean you can get these done like I said in a day if you really wanted to um, you know, or even a day to put them together, a day to quilt them and finish them. But because I have to stop and start the camera and do all that stuff, it has taken a little longer. So, okay. So that's it. That is, hopefully you guys can see that where it just turned. It turns. 
here gives you gives you a nice little finished look on there when you go to sew the seams so I'm gonna finish up the other two come back and start on the handles okay so now I have finished all three um, they are prepped and ready to be sewn together but we've got to do the next step is to do the straps so I've got three sets here I'm just gonna do one set on camera um, and then I'll do the other two off just to kind of shorten this video a little bit uh, I did on these because I used fat quarters I did sew the pieces together that I needed okay and this essentially actually I've already pieced these did I piece that one together oh I pieced this one together just to kind of show you guys I did this one to begin with but what I had to do was sew my pieces together and then do my seam for it so that's that's those two that are done however I'm going to show you with the next set so you're going to have four of these bigger fat pieces okay and then what I'm going to do is my right sides together and yes batik is very hard sometimes to figure out what is the what is the correct side and what is not and there is a way that you can do that to look for it but I'm not going to do it on this video um, I can definitely show you in another time okay so I kind of want to make this very similar in the pattern it's not directional but it, but sometimes if you get two pieces that one looks upside down and the other one looks right side up that looks funny so it says just put your right sides together at like like an upside down L right because what we're gonna do is sew a diagonal 45 degree diagonal to create one big piece so with my pieces together and I just left my walking foot on here and that's fine I'm gonna try and make sure I keep it as straight as possible I have a piece of tape that I do put on here at the zero and that helps me with my binding to kind of make sure that I'm lined up especially if you've got big thick pieces like this I am using a three on this, but you can um, definitely go smaller if you want. And then it says cut it close to, not a quarter inch, it just says close to the seam. I'm going to do it, I don't know, maybe about an eighth of an inch. And then you're going to iron the, that seam open. So you got a couple nice little scrap pieces for your scrap bin. And then we'll do the second strap here. These are so much fun to do. I will, t I will say they are very, very fun. I know there's other patterns too out there to do little totes and stuff. But I'm gonna try it, you never know. Okay. All right, here we go on this one. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm staying a center because it is a long piece that I stay, that point stays on the edge of that see it on the edge of that tape right there at my zero I also if you notice have another piece here that's set at five eighths okay and I use that you know with other sewing that may require five to eighths um, or actually this is a little bit more I think what is this for oh this is so when I do my binding and stuff um, like a, a smaller binding I can um, do some other stuff but I marked on here binding something <laughs> but I normally use this zero one 
but this one is here for a certain kind of binding that I do. Alrighty. I want to cut it right on the line. I want to go a little bit above about an eighth of an inch. You could do a quarter if you wanted. I don't see why not. I mean, but now we're going to take these over to the ironing board, open them up, and do some more ironing on it, uh, which is part of the next step. So I'm going to sew this last one set together, and we'll move on over to the ironing board. All right, so now what we just need to do is iron out everything. Get these little folds out of here because they've been folded over. I want to open my seam here, get it open. Sometimes these diagonal seams are a little tricky. You can get your point of your iron in there. Once you get it opened up, you should be able to lay it and just push that nose of your iron right down the center of that. And then I typically will flip it over and just make sure there's no pucker at the seam. And then I'm going to lay it over the uh, bag that it goes to because our next step will be to cut them down to size because they need to be 50 inches. So. When you want it to do something, it won't do it, but any other time it's just like, boop, opens right up. There we go. and flat. Okay. And then we got two more to go for the blue. Just go ahead and do these ones on camera real quick. Let's see if I can pop this one open. Sometimes if you pop them from the other direction, there we go. Oh, had it. moves right through it. Alright, and we've got one last one to do. And then we take them to the cutting board and cut them down to length. As per the instructions. Typically what I do, because some cutting boards, like I have one that's 36 inches, which is a yard, and then another one that's 24. Half of that is 25, so I can just half it in half and then add my scooch it over and then I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to take these over to the iron to the cutting board and uh, cut them down to size. I'm going to show you how I do one, finish them up, and then we'll be ready to um, move along and get these straps sewn on and then everything all sewn together. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how, to, how I do that on a shorter mat. So I've got my piece folded in half, and then my mat is actually only 24 inches. So I'm gonna take my folded end down here, and the nice thing with this mat is it goes, you can count 
from 1 to 24 on this side or 1 to 24 on that side. So it, it doesn't matter which way you start. You know, just make sure that your end is at the furthest part, which for, for this mat is 24 inches. And then what I'm going to do is line that edge up with the line, the end of my mat. I am going to fold it in one inch. So I'm going to place that fold at the one inch um, line, push, hold it and push it back so that it lines up again. Hold it down, just flatten it out. So now I know that's going to be my 50 inches. I will show you just in a second. So I cut that end off. All right. So now I'm going to get me at my tape measure and show you. It should be 25 inches, which times two is 50. So let's do it this way so you can see closer to my flat. Take it to the edge. There's 25. Right. Let's see if I can get my hand out the way here for you to see. Take it down. And you see it's on the end there and it's 25. That's 50, 50 inches. So that's what I'm going to do for the remainder of mine. Um, so I'm going to get them all cut to size and then we're going to come back and move on to the next step. Now at this point, all of your strap pieces should be at the length specified in the instructions. And now what we want to do is bring this four and a half inch width um, end in half an inch. So does it have to be exact? No, but you know, my ADHD says oh, it has to be. <laughs> so. You just iron that, so you have half an inch on both ends, and you'll do that with all your straps, with, uh, both straps on each bag. So you'll, if you're doing all the three uh, sharper totes, then you're going to have six of these to do. Okay. Then once you get those ends ironed, you're going to put your wrong sides together and then just kind of uh, fold it in half so that your wrong sides are together. Try and keep it as even as possible. Okay. It's almost like making binding. strap so you'll see what needs to be done and then you'll go and do them if you're following along or if you're um, planning on doing them just do them all at once okay but I'm just doing one to show you so now my wrong sides are together it's folded in half you're gonna open it back up and then you're going to take each end, so your the end that faces you, and fold it up to the crease. I typically do this right below the crease because this is where your uh, interfacing strip is going to go into, and you want to make sure that you have enough uh, so you don't have like a bunch of fabric folding over each other. So just like a smidgen. <laughs> when I say a smidgen, I'm, I'm meaning like a 30 seconds or less below that line, that the uh, halfway line that you just pressed into the strap. You can do both sides at once if you want. I prefer to do them one at a time. And then I just turn it and 
do the same thing on the other side. pieces are together, you just have a very slight opening that goes right over. You can see that center seam. said you're going to do that with all the straps. All the way to the end. So that if you were to fold it over, it would look like a piece of store-bought binding. Like this. So when you're open, your two end pieces Go towards the middle, and there you go. Then, what you want to do is you had from your pattern two pieces for each strap, you know, one for each strap for each bag, which I pinned together that you were to cut out. Then, what you're going to do is you're going to nest this right inside. like that. Just kind of open it up and nest it in there. And it will be shorter by just a little bit. Probably about, let's see, about a quarter inch on either end. So, you know, start at about a quarter inch down. And then on the other end, you should have about a quarter inch there as well that it's nested in okay now um, you're gonna you're gonna fold this in half right on that fold line all the layers including that stabilizer that's inside there Try and keep it so that your ends are even, your two ends that meet. They're being folded up and pressed together. straps. So once you've gotten to this point, okay, I'm going to do that with the remaining uh, five that I have to do. I'm going to go ahead and get them all ready and then we'll proceed with sewing them onto the grocery tip. Okay, I have all of my straps all folded, all the interfacing inside of it or the stabilizer as they call it. So now the next step is to sew them together. So your two open sides, right here, you're just gonna run a seam close to the edge. I would say maybe about an eighth of an inch from the edge of your, um, your two edges, just 
make sure you do it on the open end okay I'm not going to show that on camera because um, then I would have to move it and then move it back over here because the step after that will be to mark where we're going to place those handles onto the bag itself but I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys can handle it at this point so like I said just your open your two open ends on that side you're going to run a seam about a quarter of an inch from the edge so. all right now that we have sewn our pieces together so that our closed ends um, our open ends are now closed and we should have two straps we need to mark and pin the straps to get them ready to sew down so this tells you the instructions tells you go 15 inches down seven and a quarter over and then mark an inch and a half well your straps only an inch and I don't like having that big old line in there um, even though I use an air uh, an air dry pen and they work typically pretty good sometimes so I'm just gonna draw a couple dots so if you notice if you come down 15 inches from your top it should be to the edge of where this notch is cut out right so we already know that should be 15 inches if we take it seven and a quarter over right there right so I'm going to do seven and a quarter I know my piece is is an inch so what I can do is from the edge measure seven and a quarter and then eight and a quarter one inch right so if I take this from here to here it's 15 inches from there to there, it's 15 inches. So what I'm gonna do, and you're gonna do this with all four sides, I'm gonna take the side that is stitched and put it towards the middle of, the, of your um, bag. And then I'm just gonna align it there, place a pin, just remeasure real quick and make sure I'm 15 yep then I'm going to come over to the other side and do the same thing so from this edge this outer edge I'm going to measure seven and a quarter and then eight and a quarter. Let's double check. 15, good. And then I am going to turn this so that it kind of has a loop, but that my sewn edge is facing towards the center. Take my edge. It there. It's all right if some of your fabric poked out on the end because we are when we sew this down we're gonna flip it up. So let's double check. Fifteen. All right. All right. So then I'm just gonna. Move that one over and do the same thing over here. <sighs> Magic pins my patootie. They magically stick you everywhere. <laughs> All right, so. Is my other stroke. Same thing. My sewn side towards the inside, towards the center. Right. Again. 
loop it. Let's measure. Make sure. Let's get a little, a little bit taller. So let's just bring it up a little bit. We kind of want our handle straps to be the same size here. Or the same lengths when you go to grab it. You know, you go to grab it like that. So, all right. And then the other side. my sewn side towards the inside, towards the middle. Okay. Let's measure that. Okay. Let me come up a little bit with it. Right there. Take it over the machine and we're going to give it a sew. We're just going to stitch. Did I do that? I did it backwards again. Gosh. Oh, it needs to go the other direction. <laughs> I'm glad I caught that though. Okay, so let's measure this 15 inches down. did that. I did this on the last one too. But it's an easy enough fix. Okay. And And you can, if you want, you can choose to put your stitch to the outside. It does not tell you, it does not indicate either way. So, okay. Now, we're going to sew that piece down, that piece down, and then we flip them up. All right. Okay, so we are over at the machine. I am just going to do a straight stitch that says close to the edge. This one kind of was a little crooked when it got so when it got flipped in half so I'm gonna go with this inner so I'm just gonna let's see, make sure that that's laying down give it a back stitch over and then just do a straight stitch across back stitch it Move to the next one. All right. I'm going to pull this pin out. It keeps wanting to catch my fabric there. Back stitch. And then come forward. Just straight across. Stitch it. All right. Pin over there. Now I'm just going to turn it. So make sure I don't catch on anything. Those straps we just sewn down, I'm just going to push them out the way right, so that these ones will lay flat. Hopefully, I don't knock into you guys again. This pen. Back stitch it. Got a little heavy footed there, huh? <laughs> Alright, 
same thing here. Pin. Just hold it in place. And okay, where'd that pin go? Sorry. Try to flatten that down because I don't want it tucking up. Grab that end over there. All right. So now what we need to do is um, flip them upward and then we're going to tack it down, but we have to measure how far down. We need to go so we're back over to the ironing board okay so we're back at the ironing board we've sewn our piece straight down and then this needs to be sewn up but we need to measure how far down we need to stop so here's what I do instead of marking it I'm gonna pin so I need to pin to keep it down anyway they want you to do three inches from the top. Okay, so now I'm just going to stick my pin in here. That's my top right there. Okay, and it holds it down. Do the same thing over here. Just going to make sure that my straight edge. And three inches Straight. And then go back over to the sewing machine. So now that we have these pinned down, we're going to come in and we're going to sew these edges down, okay, and then re do a reinforcement little X to um, give it some stability. Okay, so I'm going to stop. start at the top where I've pinned, and then I'm going to sew it. Um, you could do a quarter inch, but I'm going to do an eighth next to there. Um, and then I'm going to do, oh, I hit my cut button. That's okay. Alright, so I'm going to do a back stitch there. And then I'm just going to take it all the way down. That's why this is important to have a walking foot because there's a lot, if you quilt this, there's a lot of thickness. Even if you don't quilt it, once you get all, through all these layers, um, stabilizer and fabric and everything else, you want a nice even stitch. And I'm, I've got mine set at two. Because I need some stability here. I'm going to take it almost down to the edge. And it tells you to do an X here, but I come back and do these X's after I get my straps sewn down. 
Now, I sewed this edge an eighth of an inch, so I can just sew right over that sew line, that stitch line from the strap already. And then you're gonna come up here, you're gonna remember where you started. And then do a back stitch. Okay. Then, once I've done all four, I'll come back and I just sew a little X in here. So I'm gonna take it from this corner I do back stitch, and then I'm just gonna go to the other edge in a diagonal, lift my foot, oh, get this under here, turn it, go straight across to the other edge, turn it again, And then just kind of line up this corner. Okay. And then I'm going to back stitch. I've already sewed it down there. I you can complete it and make a complete box if you want, but this is this is what it looks like. Hopefully you guys can see that. And that's what you're gonna do with all the straps to sew them all down. We'll come back and look at getting it all pieced together and sewn together. Okay, so now we I've got all the handles sewn down. So now we need to const finish constructing it and putting it together. So our next step is to fold this in half so that and I pinned, I went ahead and pinned my straps down so that they don't move and I don't, can't, don't take a chance of getting them caught. So what I want to do is take these two edges, okay? Here's where that notch is right here. Let's see if I can show you guys. Here's where the notch is. And you're going to put these two pieces together. And then you're going to sew a seam that is half an inch. All right, so get this thickness through here. And I think I wanna just put a couple little pins in here real quick. That, let's see, I wanna go just one at the top and one at the bottom. So I know that my half inch seam from the center is this outer piece here. So if I were to take that and put that right there, there's my half inch. It's right to this edge right here. So I also have one I think marked. There's a marking here. That's actually, that's where my binding, actually, that's the one right there, half an inch. <laughs> so, I knew it was there for something. So, I am going to stitch at, I'm going to do two and a half because this is pretty thick. And I'm just going to back stitch it. Pull my pin. Sew these edges together, making sure that they are even as I sew it. Give it a 
a good back stitch up. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I don't know why she's upset. She just had dinner. <laughs> All right, so. Pin these together. Oh, she's mad about something. Does get a little bit heavy, especially if you quilt it, so you have to work it a little bit. Alright, All right, so let's slide this under. Oh, I don't knock into you guys. smaller with your stitch if you want. I'm just doing a two and a half because it is pretty thick already and I don't want any puckering or breakage so. Okay so then it tells you to go ahead and open this up but what I'm going to do is I, I open these seams right And I sew them. I'll take an iron. I'm going to take an iron. I'm going to open these up. Okay. And then you can try and do it with your fingers. It's going to be pretty thick. And I open them up. And then I just put um, a decorative stitch. Meaning I just stitch it down a quarter of an inch from the edge down. So that, and I think I might be able to do this here so I think let's see if I turn this inside out like so I do this now before I obviously sew the bottom together it gives you it opens up the seam so that way you don't have that thick bulky seam in there in the edges and then um, and it's a little bit to finagle it down in here. Come on. But it's worth it because it, it serves as a nice pretty seam and then um, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. But I'm going to open the seam and then I'm going to set my foot down a quarter inch Give a little back stitch it's gonna stitch into the, the bottom but it'll give a decorative stitch on the outside and then it will also hold open your seams so they're not so bulky in your bag another reason why I finished them. I could have used a green thread, but I just used what I had already on my machine, which was white. But you could go all out and it is a lot easier if you iron these down though. have a nice stitch line down here. Okay. I'll do the same thing on the other side. You could make this bigger. Do a three if you wanted. Do 
two and a half is good for me. So you just gotta, and it seems like it's a little difficult. You just have to manage the fabric. Get it in there. So as you can see, I'm down here at this edge. I have a quarter of an inch alignment there. said it is much easier to do if you iron it open it is thick it is a thick seam so if not you'll have all this bulk sticking in the inside of your bag my instructions don't tell you to do this you don't have to do it I just do it because I I like my seams to be open in there does give a nice little decorative stitch on the outside of the bag. Just like that. So, and then your seams are open. And then I'm going to do this side real quick, and then we'll come back and I will um, show you how to close the, the ends to that. Okay, so now we have our edges, um, our sides sewn together. So you have the beginning of a tote here, and then I sewed down my edges and I showed you how to do that. So now we need to sew the bottom. So what you gotta do is flatten it out on one edge where the seam comes up and you're just gonna flatten it straight. Try and get it as straight as possible on those edges and then pin maybe there we go and if you quilt it it's gonna be a little bit thick around your seam so take take it slow you're gonna do the foot this side first half an inch stitch it to reinforce your stitch come on take my pen out and keep going something in my bobbin case a piece of lint because it almost looks like it's skipping stitches but <clears throat> here yeah it skipped a few stitches thread is set in there correctly okay so now we have one edge already okay I don't flip this open I don't try to even attempt to sew it down it's just at the bottom of the bag you could come back and uh, finish it with um, sometimes I'll come in and just cut this excess off and do a serge stitch so it reinforces it which I will probably do and then I'm just going to do the other side. Flatten it down where your seam that you sewed together is kind of the, right in the middle. Which lay pretty flat on there. Pin it together. And do the same thing. Sew it down. Hopefully, you guys are able to see this. I didn't even think about it being <laughs> stuck up there. <laughs> uh. If 
if you're worried or don't have a serger, you could backstitch along your seams here. Um, that you know, whether you open them or not, you could backstitch over them to reinforce that area. It does not call to do that, but it doesn't hurt. All right. So what I'm going to do is take it to the serger, and I'm just going to take and, and serge this edge right here. Okay, so I did a finishing edge here just to kind of hold everything together. Um, I was a little concerned I have something in maybe in my bobbin case because it's skipping a few stitches, so I'm going to need to clean that out. Not a big So, now... We're down to only having to finish up with the binding of, to finish it the rest of the way, binding the top here, but I'm going to take a stick or a ruler or anything you have. I have one of these little tools, which are great, just run, run it along the seam here. side and you can run an iron over this to kind of square your stuff if you want these are nice little chakra totes they're pretty big fit quite a few boxes of cereal I think and coffee and <laughs> all those kind of things in there one nice thing is the straps come all the way to the bottom so you've got plenty of space, uh, plenty of area to, um, you know, strap to distribute the weight. And so far, this is what we have. This is the one with the pocket in the front, okay? You can iron it, you can do whatever. Um, I have seen people that will take and run a stitch all the way up this, this to square it. I wouldn't recommend that. I did it on one and it didn't look very well after I bound it. And I don't know, maybe you could if you did it really, really slight. Uh, I think I would just, I'm happy with it being like this, you know, um, it, it'll square itself off over time. So tomorrow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and, um, because I still need to cut the binding because that was the last thing I needed to cut on this. I don't like cutting it early because it sits and it frays. So tomorrow we're going to come back and finish this up. That'll give me a chance to try and see what's going on with my machine and finish the rest of the other totes um, and get them caught up to this point. And um, just, uh, I guess you could fold it like this again. So we'll come back tomorrow and do the binding. Till tomorrow, guys. Plenty of hugs, loves, and blessings. Bye, guys.